All right, here we are. Welcome to day four of our Leadership Masterclass. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Here we are. We're diving in today talking about relationship mapping. We're in our Leadership Foundations Masterclass. So go ahead, hop on board. Let me know what part of the world are you chiming in from? Is it Trinidad? Are you in California? Where are my Florida peeps? Hello, Abigail and Shani and, and Michelle and Jennifer. Welcome. Glad that you are here. Who else is chiming in and what part of the country or the world rather are you chiming in from? Caroline's here. Sarah's here. We have been rocking it. You have been rocking it over in the over the course of the last three sessions and today is session four. So we're going to dive in. Welcome, Victor. Let me know where you're calling in from. I can see people rolling in. Robin's here. I can see you rolling in. What part of the world are you chiming in from? Are you from Connecticut? Where are you calling in from? Where are you chiming in from? I don't know if I see the comments quite yet. So Mallory's here. Jamie's here. Welcome, welcome. You are here on day four of our Leadership Masterclass. And I have to tell you, um, our team is blown away, just simply blown away with all of the phenomenal work that you folks are doing. So I definitely cannot see comments. Oh, there we go. I see one comment. Okay, there we go. We're in, we're in. <laughs> Amy's from Virginia. Abigail's from California. Victim from Chile. Uh, Victor, rather, from Chile. Fantastic. Kaylee from Massachusetts. Wonderful. Glad you are here. Uh, Mallory, Richmond, Virginia. Fantastic. Hello, Sarah. Where are you calling in from? Where are you chiming in from? Melissa from Texas. So we have folks from all over. Chris from Alabama. Here we go. Here we are. Tanya from Florida. Oh, lovely Florida. Tanya, maybe I'll connect with you when I go visit all those Florida peeps in July for the conference, right? Uh, welcome, welcome. Chile, very nice. Who's from Chile? I just saw Victor from Chile. Very good. Aviva Chile. Exactly, exactly. Michigan. Sarah Chamberlain's from Michigan. Welcome, Michelle from Texas. Yes, a Texas girl. Rainy California. Darcy's from Rainy California. Well, I have to say, I would kind of prefer rain right now because it's nine degrees here in New Hampshire. It is nine degrees here in New Hampshire. Um, welcome, welcome, Tanya. Yes, yes, welcome. Here we are. Hello, Trisha. Hello, Tanya. Hello, Caroline. Jennifer Coner's here. And she, yes, I'm excited about that feedback too. Um, Leisha, you are from far away. You are from far away. Fantastic. So glad you're joining us. What time is it, Leisha, where you are? What time is it where you are? Because you are quite a distance away from us. Yes, Darcy, it is cold here. It is nine degrees. It is warm your car up kind of morning. And um, pray you don't have to go outside. It's stair climb kind of day. <laughs> welcome, Alicia. Where are you chiming in from? Alicia, welcome, welcome. Uh, all right, so we're gonna get going. It is quite chilly. And I have to say, I've had a fantastic morning because um, I've had the pleasure of hopping on the phone with some leaders in industry recently who are gonna come join us over in our Tribe of Excellence Facebook community. Uh, it's 1 p.m. Okay, not too bad. <clears throat> not too bad. Yes, Kaylee, it does feel colder, colder, exactly. Lisa, you have rain. Jen is in Virginia. Virginia's in the house. I think there's quite a few Virginia folks here. Absolutely. Uh, Virginia is in the house. Fantastic. So I've had the pleasure of connecting with some great leaders yesterday and today who are going to come on board and be some speakers for us. So, um, you know, we have um, a book authors uh, in leaders of uh, who have written leadership books, authors of books who have written about leadership. There we go. Uh, folks who are in the military um, and converting over to law enforcement and public sector and private sector are gonna come show, share some tips with us about organizational structure and how to create feedback loops and how to create cultures of change and influence our folks and people and all that good stuff. So I am so excited about who we have coming on board over the next couple of months. Just phenomenal people. Darcy says, do you all know how to join this group to the top of our Facebook group? Um, are you talking about pinning the group, Darcy? Are you talking about pinning this to the top of, the, of your Facebook group? Caroline is, Caroline Collins is our Facebook genius. And so she'll be able to tell you exactly how to pin it to the top. Welcome, Keith. Welcome, Dee. So good. Good morning. Welcome, Christiane. Glad that you are here. Yes, Caroline's our genius. I know that there's a couple, there's like three little dots up at the top that for me, I click on it and I just say pin, 
one of my pinned groups. Yes, Darcy, pin, exactly, exactly. So if you need help with that, reach out to Caroline. She's a genius at all that. Um, yes, Rhea, welcome, welcome. Yes, it's the three dots. That's what I'm thinking about too. So here we are. Uh, we are on day four. It is Friday. It is Friday. This week has flown by for me. I imagine it's flown by for you as well. And so I'm welcoming you here. Uh, thankful that you are showing up thankful that you are showing up. So there's 34, 35, 36 of you right now who are showing up, right? Every day. And some of you um, are here live and some of you are listening to the replay, right? So let us know. Let us know who is here live right now and who is on the replay. Shani is here live. Yes, it is Friday. Renee is here live. Junior is here live. Yes, Friday is here. It is here, Caroline. Um, yes, day four, come on in. Joe and Tina and um, Pearl, we welcome you. Welcome, welcome, uh, Kaylee. And some of you are just joining this masterclass series, which is a seven day series. Some of you are just joining it right now. And so, you know, if you need to catch up, this weekend is a great time to catch up. All you need to do is go to unit one. All you need to do is go to unit one. Pearl and some other folks have just reached out and they said, can I just join in right now? Yes, email or send a message to me or to Caroline Collins and we will email you that workbook so that you can join in with the rest of us. Look at Tanya's here live, Lisa's here live, everyone, Erica's here live, welcome, welcome. Um, Amy's here live, good to see you, Amy. How many of you are leading teams of um, five or more people right now? How many of you are leading teams of five or more people right now? Annie is live. Victor is live. I'm so happy that you all are joining us live here. Many of you are leading teams of between one and five, and then several of you are leading, leading teams of you know six to 26 to 36, 86. Um, spoke, uh, who I think... Um, uh, Michelle, you're leading a team, uh, or uh, Michelle and Melissa leading teams of 30, right? Leading teams of 100. Um, 13, says Darcy. Lisa's two teams with 14 people. Renee's leading a team of eight people. Tanya is uh, having had 13 direct reports. This is great for you to know, right? This is great for you to connect with other people who are doing what you're doing. Because often, you know, we feel very alone, right? We feel very alone. And for those of you who are, you know, the, the solo person, right? You're the solopreneur or you're the solo analyst or you're the solo, you know, worker, right? It's okay. You can be a leader too, right? D is leading a team of 14. Victor's a team of five. Um, Amy is five officially, but it's more like eight. Yeah, yeah. So some of you are like a solo team. And these theories apply to you too. What we're really talking about um, today are the teams that are, you know, the leaders of teams, right? The leaders of, of official teams of 5, 10, 30, 40, 140 people, okay? Um, but what we're talking about, the tactic that we're talking about is going to apply to everyone here. Everyone here who's aspiring to be a leader, maybe you want that leadership role and you're prepping yourself now, right? Um, and Erin, you, it's you and one other person. Rhea, it's you. Uh, Lisa, yes, you have up to 25. <laughs> exactly. Hands are full. Um, so whether you're leading, leading a team of yourself or 250 people, what we're going to talk about today, what we're going to talk about today is key. Because even if you are leading only yourself right now, your influence goes beyond you relative to the work that you do, relative to the reach that you want to have. So, so you know, you, a lot of folks here um, revealed some of their fears around, you know, people taking them seriously and positioning themselves well as a professional leader, right? As a person of influence. And there's all kinds of factors that, that really impede us, right? There's all kinds of factors that, that make us fear that we're not good enough, right? It could be that you're a woman in policing and you have those fears. I talked to someone yesterday that that was a challenge. It could be, you know, that you are um, a minority. It could be that you are young. It could be that you feel like you're just not good enough. It could be any factor that's in your head and sometimes right in front of you, quite honestly, that, that 
creates fear, right? That creates fear. And so what we're talking about um, today is, is creating those relationships and that culture and that buy-in that really pushes past and pushes through a lot of these things that might feel like they're, you know, in your way or in your team's way. Okay. So, uh, so for those of you who are just popping on right now, I'm actually really excited because we have some phenomenal speakers coming up over the next couple of months who have had excellent experience in operational leadership, right? Building teams, techniques and strategies, mindsets on how to be that person that can mentor your team, that can influence your team in a constructive way and can get the results that you need when you need them, right? Uh, a lot of folks, yes, Michelle, it's gonna be amazing. I'll, I'll, exactly, Jen, uh, fear is real, but it's a choice, exactly. So let's do a little recap just to make sure everyone's on the same page. I know some of you are brand new. Some of you like the recap piece. So we're going to just talk a little bit about where we've been and where we're going, right? So on day one, and if you missed it, it's in unit one. On day one, we talked about the key foundational characteristics that you as a leader or, a sp or aspiring leader need to work on that are sometimes more important than the skills right? I was talking with uh, a director today, you know, about what's the gap? What's the gap in industry relative to leadership? And he said, absolutely, it is, you know, those key foundational characteristics that we skip over. We don't prepare people for, we don't give them opportunity to grow in, right? And so that's what we did on Tuesday is we talked about what are the key core characteristics that you can build today, right, that you can build today. Now, this masterclass is seven days long, and you and I both know that leadership goes beyond seven days, right? We're just kind of scratching the surface, scratching that surface. But we're really trying to insert some mindset and some strategies to really start to think about where you want to go on your own leadership path. So Shani says, a good leader isn't power hungry, yet... Um, Let's see, hunger to empower, uh, hungry to empower others. Yes, I like that. It, that's, that's fantastic. Yes, Rhea, exactly. So those key characteristics, those fundamentals are things that need, we want to work on, sometimes more than our skill set, right? More than the tactical skills. We want to be working on those mindset skills, right? Those mindset characteristics, rather. Um, those things that make us a great leader. Jen says there's legacy and empowerment of others. That is the legacy, empowering others. Exactly, Jen. Exactly. So we also talked a lot about, we, you measured your influence, right? On a scale of one to 10, right? And, and um, Dave Mather is going to be one of our speakers in March. And he talks about this, this sphere of influence, right? On a scale of one to 10. Are you on a one, which is, oh my gosh, how do I even have this position? <laughs> Why did they pick me? To a 10 where you feel like you're floating on water and you're not even getting wet. Like you feel like everything's just in the flow. You're working really hard to build relationships and culture and environment and all that stuff, right? But it's it's been done so well that you're in the flow. So we did some reflection on where you are right now and where you're, you, you are moving toward. So we all know that influence does not happen overnight. It takes consistency, persistency over time to get those real results, right? Intentional action, intentional inspired action over time, okay? So we did a little inventory. So if you missed that part, go back to part one. Then we talked about fears and oh my Lord, fears that often hold us back from being the leaders that we want to be. Go ahead in the chat right now and list out your number one fear. Because here's the thing, you are not alone. Your number one fear, is it imposter syndrome? Is it I don't know enough syndrome? Is it a fear of failing? Is it um, fear of not being taken seriously, right? If you screw up, you're not gonna be taken seriously. What are your fears? Is it fear of someone else not doing the perfect job that you need them to do so you fear releasing, right? What are your fears today? What are your fears today? And so that's what we talked a lot about on day two, those fears. Rhea, imposter syndrome, lacking motivation, um, says, let's see, um, Michelle, Caroline, um, yes, yes, uh, I'm sorry, Kaylee says, being listened to and taken seriously, Melissa, imposter syndrome and public speaking, Trisha, failure and producing the wrong statistics, Celia, public speaking, Shani, um, I won't be accepted in my next position, yeah, you don't want to burn the bridges, 
Erica says failure of not being enough. Elise, failure, failure of fearing, fearing failure, right? Lisa, um, losing sight of the mission. Yes, Jen, uh, Abigail rather, um, lifting from her worries. Carol, imposter syndrome, Keith, all of these things. Abigail, failure and not getting that next chance. These are real, these are real, but remember what they are. Fears are real. But remember what those fears are. What are your barriers? You know, if you're studying uh, from the Proctor Institute, if you're, or, you know, the, the uh, Bob Proctor thinking, you know, thinking into results, right? So really, they're what? They're what? What are fears? So Keith says the fear of not knowing enough. Welcome, Michelle. Glad you joined us. Annie says the fear of burnout. Yes, Shani, fear is a choice. So recognizing, recognizing these fears and then positioning yourself to acknowledge these fears and recognize that they are a choice, right? And you can move beyond them with, with practice, with work. Yes, Lisa, yes, Melissa, yes, Caroline. They are choices, exactly, exactly, okay. So then we talked about mindset, right? We talked about that mindset and the four things that, that leaders think about on a regular basis, on a regular basis. And I want you to take a breath right now. You've done a lot of work this week. It is Friday. I want you to think about one person right now who might benefit from hearing what we're talking about here. And I want you to share this group with them. I want you to go, you know, in another tab or go, you know, somewhere and just in, in, or the little button that says invite. And I want you to invite them. If you think that this would be helpful for someone else to hear right now, go ahead and invite them here. Okay. We have about 130 people enrolled in this masterclass. We fully recognize that some folks are watching live and some folks are watching the replay. So if you're here for the replay, you're important too. go ahead and click replay or type in replay and share the same. You can share the replay as well. Aaron says it's a choice to move past them, but it takes commitment. It takes commitment and people. It takes proximity to the right people to move you when you're feeling stressed, to move you in that right direction when, you know, you're just not sure how, right? Or the world is coming on your shoulders. You need other people around you to support you in this growth. Yes, Erin, exactly. So the four mindset pieces to really pay attention to, who remembers what those mindset pieces are? The four things that leaders think about on a daily basis, right? The four things. The four things that leaders think about that really are not tactics. We're not thinking about the tactics. We're thinking about what, right? We're thinking about what. Caroline says, I know that there's someone who's in your network who is struggling. Yes, exactly. We are community here. I need y'all in this room on speed dial, says Shani. Yes, <laughs> exactly, Shani. Um, B-R-R-L, you guys made an acronym. I'm so happy. Look at this. Annie has the acronym. <laughs> you guys are a riot. Kaylee, purpose. Yes, Victor made it. Allie, um, Abigail. So one, vision. Leaders are always thinking about the vision. Big picture. Melissa got it. Yes. Leaders are thinking about the vision. Yes, Alicia. So we're thinking about where we are going. We're spending time in our day to really define where we are going. So we, we help our leaders do this with quarterly check-ins, right? So we talk about where we're going for the year or three years, really. And then we do quarterly check-ins with our leaders, right? To really, yes, Leisha, leadership of self. And so to really make sure that our leaders are guided in that vision, this is what we're thinking about. Because you are the chiropractor. You are the alignment chiropractor. As a manager, as a supervisor, as a leader, you are aligning people. You are aligning people with that vision. Yes, Annie. Yes, I see all of you chiming in right now. Um, Kaylee got it. Uh, Caroline, Alicia, Alicia, you all got it. You all got it here. So vision. Number two, leaders are always thinking about results. Is what we're doing producing results? How do we live the 80-20 lifestyle, right? How do we take 20% of the things that produce 80% of the results and focus on those 20%? Yes, Erica. <laughs> Tribe swag. So it's so funny you say that, Jen, because um, Michelle had a great idea to start getting some t-shirts <laughs> and gear put together. And so I think we're going to do that. I think we're going to give away some, some gear. Yes. <laughs> Shani wants one. Who else wants a t-shirt? I think we're going to just do that. I, I think I know someone who might be willing to make some shirts for us. 
So yes, yes. Carol is a swag queen. Uh, oh, she knows that Erica is the swag queen. Exactly, exactly. A mouse pad. What else? What else? What other kind of swag do you want, right? What other kind of swag do you want to really reinforce this leadership piece to make it so obvious and apparent to you every day? So thinking about vision, thinking about results, what results am I focused on that get me, uh, what activities rather am I focused on that get me the best results? D's in for it, Sarah's in for it, fantastic, I love it. The, the third thing is rising others. Now today, if you noticed, today we made a post in our Tribe of Excellence Facebook community that says rise others. It is found in the unit called success stories. This is your opportunity. Water bottles, says Ria, I like it. So this is your opportunity to sit back, right? Find that pause, take that breath, create that quiet space and decide, you know, who can I rise right now? Who can I celebrate? So the Rise Each Other post is all about you being empowered to rise somebody else by nominating them. Elise says coffee mug, Lanyard says Abigail, uh, Aaron says post its post-its with mindsets already. Oh my gosh, I love these ideas. We're gonna, I'm gonna have to go through all of this and just write this all down. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. So here we go. So we're talking about a coffee mug for Caroline too. Yes, water bottles with leadership of self-motivation on the side. This is important stuff, right? At the forefront. This is at the forefront. This is where we're going. This is where we're headed. This is where you're headed. This is where we're all headed, right? In leadership, leadership of career and leadership of self. So thinking about those, um, that rising others. So the rise and other post, you just it, nominate someone. I think we already have our first person nominated for February. <laughs> our post came out early. But all you do is you go to that success page, right? The success unit, um, success stories rather. And you find the February post for rise each other and you nominate someone. And then we are gonna send them some swag. We are gonna send them some wellness kit on your behalf as just like a little, hey, this person, you know, this person nominated you. So we'll select one winner at the end of the month, but even if they don't win to be nominated, to be nominated is phenomenal. Jimmy Choo shoes, those are pretty expensive. Those are <laughs> pretty expensive. Welcome, Alex, glad that you are here. Welcome back. And so we have vision, results, rising others, and then fourth, leaders are always thinking about legacy how to build legacy and this it's multi components, right? So in our group, which we'll talk about in a moment, we talk a lot about building effective, proper, caring legacy systems, processes, we want everyone to want our job when we leave, right? And how do we make that happen? How do we make it so that everybody wants our job when we're ready to leave? We build that strong legacy, we coach, we mentor people to rise into our positions, right? And we don't just hop ship and be like, all right, you're it now. We really give them the tools that they need. That's like having one of our children just go off and drive with never having taken driver's lessons, right? That's not really fair. You want to teach them how to drive. So you as leaders, we as leaders want to teach our people now how to drive so that they're not getting on the highway for the first time when we leave. We want to build legacy. Annie Mitchell has joined us. Welcome, Annie. So glad that you are here. I just adore Annie. She's one of my favorite leaders of all times. Fantastic that you are here. So the mindset things that we are talking about as leaders, that what we're thinking about as leaders on a regular basis, we're thinking about the vision, the results, the rising others, and building legacy, right? And yesterday we talked about what leaders do and you all rocked it out. We talked about those four key pillars. What are the four key pillars? Who remembers the four key pillars of what we do as leaders? So we talked about the foundational piece, the characteristics. We talked about how to think like a leader. What are we thinking about? And now we're talking about what we do as leaders. And so let's talk about those four key pillars of action inspired action. Yes, Lisa, Annie's in the house. Kaylee, purpose. Yes, that is that is key pillar number one, aligning with the purpose. We are chiropractors, right? We are alignment chiropractors as leaders. Exactly, exactly. Um, Allie has it, purpose. Yes, number one is purpose. Yes, Lisa, number two is leadership of self. If you are not taking excellent care of you. If you are not learning and growing and inserting yourself in workshops like this one that grow you as a leader, that grow you as a human, right? Not just in your tactics, but in your mindset, 
um, you, you're doing your team and yourself a disadvantage, right? You're doing your team and your dis self a disadvantage. Uh, yes, we are alignment chiropractors. We are regularly aligning our teams with the vision, right? So we're telling you what we do, but it's hard to put this into action. And that was your homework, right? And so we're going to share some of your amazing homework today. I think it was phenomenal. The work that you did on day three homework was phenomenal. And then the last, uh, and so we have purpose, we have leadership of self and efficiency systems. Leaders look at your systems, right? And we make them more efficient. We, def we look at, you know, what's working, what's not working, what do our people need to operate like that well-oiled machine? What can we automate? What can we, you know, eliminate? What are the systems that we can put in place? What are the policies, the onboarding procedures? What are the things that we can put into place that are gonna create these efficiency systems? Where can we tighten things up? Where can we wash our cottage cheese, right? So Trisha says, um, snow is predicted here for Monday. I'm already taking personal health day and I'm letting my analysts know. Fantastic. Lisa says, I'm the only nerd that likes homework. No, yes, you're doing great. You're doing great. High purpose environments. Yes, who said that? Let's see, Renee, exactly. So that's our last one is our high purpose people and environments how we are building our people and environments. So as a leader, you know, you can have your mindset on your stickies, right? Those mindset things that you're thinking about on a regular basis. And then you can have your do's. What do I do on a regular basis? And so creating people, right? Oh, Shani loves school. Awesome, right? Um, Jen says the homework helps our brain juices flow. Yes, exactly, exactly. So we really need to be putting into action, right? What we do putting into action what, what these thoughts are. And well, the ways that we can do that is through that box that you got, through the box, wherever that might be, um, your homework box, right? And so many of you talked about purpose, leadership of self, efficiency habits and systems, and high performance teams and environments. And I wanna take a moment to share that because these were excellent methods, action steps. Now, this takes time. This takes time to implement fully. But these are the key boxes, these are the key pillars that you as a leader, whether you're leading a team of one or 1,000, you wanna be implementing on a regular basis. So, Rhea, you shared creating, you're gonna create that vision statement, right? So she's creating purpose by actually writing down the vision statement of where her unit is going. And she's practicing the pause. You will see um, this pause piece is, is big. Because remember, Leaders get quiet. <laughs> Leaders get quiet and think, right? So we get quiet and we think. We set aside time to brainstorm, to strategize, to think. If you're always in the tactics, if you're always in the doing, then you can't think bigger picture, right? So you must set aside time to strategize. And you can time chunk it right into your schedule, right? Um, I time chunk it right into my Friday schedule, typically. Today is a Friday that's different, right? Because uh, we're here together today, which I love right? Getting quiet and thinking. Yes, Caroline. Yes. Um, so Rhea's creating that vision statement. I love it. Shani is leading the day with an inspirational story. I love it. She's connecting her people to the purpose, why we are here, why we are here. Sometimes it can feel not related, right? And so connecting people to the stories. I love it, Shani. Shani's also working on automating um, and eating lunch with her team to get to know them a little bit better. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Quiet, think and drink. We can, we can, we should have a virtual session for leaders of called quiet, think and drink. We'll all have a glass of wine. I'll have my tea and we can all sit and be quiet together and think and strategize. I think that's a fun idea. Renee says, focusing on the bigger picture because sometimes, especially during COVID, the team is losing sight of that bigger picture. So bringing it back to the bigger picture in increasing the efficiency strategies. You know, I'm working with an agency right now um, where they're really looking at the efficiency strategies of their team, right? What reports and products are we currently producing? What are the what's the purpose of each of those reports that we're currently producing and are they reaching the purpose right are 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 the products that we're producing um creating the intended results that we want them to have and really looking at that writing that down and seeing is that happening so i love that that was great renee um, and then, um, Aaron says there's Brene Brown has this turn and learn thing that you can use with your team, which is wonderful. Renee talked about these retreats, right? Virtual team retreats. 
Yes, Lisa, you must be so fun to, me, oh my gosh, yeah, I think Renee must be so fun to work with. Annie is so fun to work with. Annie says, advocate for your people and have their backs. That is absolutely part of this equation, part of creating those high purpose environments in that, that last box, absolutely. If you create an environment with folks where they know they can come to you, we're talking to, um, you know, a director today that he's setting up his um, feedback cycle. Like he, uh, I forget what it's actually called. Oh, a climate survey. He's sending out his climate survey to all of his analysts and saying, how am I doing? How am I doing as a leader? What can I do to improve? What do you need that's better from me? So climate surveys is another great tool for this. Um, so Renee talked about these virtual retreats right? Sending each of her analysts, each of her employees, a box with some goodies inside that they're going to bring to these virtual retreats and connect virtually because everyone's, you know, distant right now. I thought that was phenomenal. How many of you do virtual retreats right now with your people, right? How many of you keep your people connected by doing these virtual retreats, right? I thought it was phenomenal. And so Erin Jones gave an idea of, you know, the turn and learn, by uh, Brene Brown to kind of get some exercises, virtual exercises that are not necessarily work focused, but more about that team building piece, which is missing in a lot of, of agencies and in a lot of companies. Welcome, Alex. Glad you are here. Yeah, what an awesome idea, Alicia, huh? She had a great idea. Leisha talked about strategic plan toward that vision. Great, you have a vision, but how can we move toward that vision? So really designing that strategic plan. We actually have an infrastructure series where we do just that. We design the vision, we give you templates, and then we help you move toward that vision, which is phenomenal. Yes, Ria, sign me up. Bravery and vulnerability. Who is that? Climate survey says Jen. Yeah, it's so, so awesome. Victor, virtual barbecue. I love it. I love it, Victor. And maybe slash vegan for the vegans out there, right? Uh, Michelle is doing a scavenger hunt for Valentine's Day at the office. I love it. I love it. I love it. Amy, I'm not as cool as Renee. She helps us regularly. I like it. Fantastic. Um, yeah, this needs to happen. This is so good. So thinking about your teams as human beings and not just producers of products. Thinking of your teams as human beings. When you build that connection with them, which we're, that's what today is all about. That's what the next three sessions, today, tomorrow, and Monday are all about, right? How do you do that? How do you build that? Um, Alex says, um, I'm sorry, uh, Leisha says, you know, practice mindfulness as a therapy for your soul, right? <laughs> that pause, practicing that pause. I love it. Alex says, automate reports um, and dinner. Alex is automating dinner <laughs> to make life a little bit easier to create those efficiency strategies at home too, which is great. I actually automate my dinner too, which I, I'll share with you guys at some point. Celia talks about her purpose, right? And so, you know, if you're in the policing world, right, your purpose isn't data cleaning. Your purpose is not a bulletin. Your purpose is not ComStat. Those are the things that you do to create and to move toward that purpose. Your purpose is providing actionable reporting so that your officers and your detectives can succeed. I don't care if that's in ComStat, in a monthly report, in a daily report, in a bulletin, in a tactical report, in a summary report. I don't care if it's on a napkin. It, it's your role to provide that actionable reporting. So your, your mission is the actionable reporting for the purposes of crime, crash, social harm reduction, right? Um, yeah, yeah, crock pots. I like it, Keith, I like it. Ke yes, happy to see you, Nick, too. So we have some really good ideas that you all wrote in your homework, and I wanna point them out because you're doing a freaking phenomenal job on your homework. And if you haven't gotten to your homework yet, take a look, or if you've even done it, take a look at other people's homework. You are gonna be blown away. You're gonna get some ideas from other supervisors, other mid-level managers who are looking to build teams from a, a visionary place, right? So um, Sally talks about, you know, leadership of self, that she's uh, doing yoga, delegating. She's working on communication, right? Yes, key. Um, and seeing things as a team and not as an individual. Absolutely. Michelle um, is doing what she does with joy and projecting confidence and um, communication and collaboration and stopping her multitasking. I like it. I like it. Um, you know, recognizing other people's 
uh, accomplishments. And I mean, look at all these. I have front to backs on all the great things that you guys are doing. Abigail accepting failure as a choice. Yes, exactly. Nick focusing on the vision and he was pretty, uh, Sergeant was pretty uh, co uh, concrete, right? Meet weekly to share stories, right? Exercise, 5 a.m. club uh, for him, Bible reading, uh, creating that rest for the crew, promoting it. Rhea says, since I'm blind and can't see them, well, I missed that. I missed that. Sorry, Rhea. I missed what, the, what that was about. Kaylee says she's going to prioritize her mental health. When you are, you know, prioritizing your mental health, right, your team sees you as healthier. Your team sees you as healthier, right? Uh, Victor says, surf the wave, enjoy the ride, breathe and let go. Yeah. So many managers are, and supervisors are so stressed out. And so taking a step back, enjoying and, and recognizing and having gratitude are all key components, right? Uh, Mallory talks about tactics and trends, um, short and long-term long goals, really uh, improving the tactics and trends. Michelle uh, got into the ways that she's supporting her team. I, I love it. I love it. So, you know, there's a lot of great ideas in each of these blocks of things that you can do. So go back to see what other folks are doing. If you're listening to this on YouTube um, and you're like, where's the, where, what homework is she talking about? I'm talking about what home, uh, the homework that folks are doing in our Tribe of Excellence Facebook community. So if you're not already a member of our Tribe of Excellence Facebook community, Make sure you click on the button. Make sure you answer a couple of questions. Many of you, thank you for sharing our Tribe of Excellence Facebook community with others. Um, so I saw that you invited them. When they answer the questions, right, um, we let them in. So a lot of times we'll have vendors who come in and they try to solicit. So we, we don't want that. We want to make sure that people are coming in to really grow as supervisors. And so that's why we ask folks to order, uh, answer a couple questions. What that means is we also will send them and you, you know, weekly emails to let you know what's going on in the group. We have some great speakers coming up and we don't want you to miss them. So we'll send you an email once a week. Now, for those of you who are in this masterclass, you're getting an email every day only because you're in this masterclass. After that, they're not going to be daily. So don't, don't worry too much about flooding your inbox. And so, you know, one thing I wanted to say in this box here is that leaders own their own personal leadership growth. Leaders own their own personal development growth. That means that you're not sitting at your desk, sending your analysts or sending your employees or sending your students or you know sending your people to training and then you're not training yourself. Leaders know that they cannot operate alone. Leaders understand the importance of teams, whether it's their direct team, right? Well, it's definitely their direct team. And it's a team of people who support them at that supervisory level. Getting connected, and I think someone mentioned this, you let me know, <clears throat> who mentioned this last time, getting connected with the right people in proximity to the right people on a regular basis is so critical, is so critical. You might be the manager or supervisor at your company, right, or the business owner or the, or the, the supervisor at your analytical group, and you have no one to bounce ideas off of, or you have you've only seen things done one way, and you don't have great ideas from other folks. So you know, so it is critical that you take steps to really figure out how am I going to grow myself. Many of you saw a post in our tribe group the other day where we had about twelve or so people on who meet weekly, right? And who share ideas around leadership and growth and share problems too. And we together come up with solutions. Finding that group and being part of that and showing up is really, really key. So Michelle says, I love that, which is why this group has been so important to me since moving um, into your position. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so um, you know, so there are things that we talked about that you can do to help build that environment, to help build that culture, like that climate survey, right? Um, like those key things, like the, Renee's retreat, like the different things that you can do that are unique, that are team building. Now, again, leadership is long term. These are small incremental things that you must do over time with the support of folks. Rhea says the tribe has absolutely exploded over last year. It has been awesome to see and be a part of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It has exploded. Okay. So now we're moving on to relationship mapping basics. How many of you struggle with communication? How many of you struggle with communicating, with following up with people, with communicating like, you know, um, the actual? How many of you gain trust easily, right? 
Yes, Victor, leaders own their own personal goals. Yeah, exactly. Leaders own their own personal goals. You know, for those of you who, um, you know, who have studied, you know, leadership of self, who have studied leadership overall, like, you know, you own it. You own it. So many people here have showed up every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern because they own their own growth, right? You can't convince people to grow, right? You can send them to a training, but you can't convince them to have that growth mindset until you are showing by example. All right, so we got all kinds of comments here. Let me get back to them here. Um, so Abigail says, "You, <laughs> we complete her. That's wonderful. Um, Michelle says, it's amazing being able to connect with everyone here. Erica, Alicia, Shani has trouble with difficult people. Yes, it's impossible sometimes. Uh, we're going to talk about what that looks like. Uh, Caroline says, the tribe has helped me connect with such amazing people who are eager to grow. I've never seen so much inspiration in one place. I agree, Caroline. I agree. I agree. Jennifer says, uh, you got this. Yes, you sure do. Um, yes, so many new friends. Keith agrees. Uh, Michelle is all kinds of fun hashtags going on there. Um, um, Keith needs us to move in with him. I, Keith, hopefully you have been sprinkled with positivity over this week as, as the rest of you have and are stepping up to the plate and owning your role in your own leadership growth, owning your role, that transform me first and then transform other people, which Mike Marino, who's the author of that book, is gonna be joining us next uh, in uh, March. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, he's gonna be joining us here. So how many of you are struggling with communication, right? So maybe you have this upper management leadership or some political environment going on, and then you have these folks down here and you're like feeling like the squish sandwich in between, right? Uh, uh, Shani says, I repeat myself all the time because I'm <laughs> because of my Midwest twang, uh, the accent, that's awesome. Tanya's feeling it, yeah. So when I teach in different parts of the country, um, I definitely I definitely can feel it. Jen, Jennifer is having uh, challenges with communication sometime. Erica is having challenges. Um, Keith is sprinkled with positivity, Keith, right? Uh, Lisa struggles with communication sometimes. I mean, this is this is not unusual. This is not unusual, right? What got you to your position is very different from what you need to stay in that position, right? And so leaders know to be growing their people's leadership, to rising them so that they can hand this off, that you don't become a leader just because you're titled one, but you become a leader because you've practiced being a leader, right? Exactly, exactly. So this, the next part of this series, we got the foundation, we got the thinking, we got some action steps in there, right? Um, you have the Illinois twang. That's hilarious. As Victor says, at the start was so difficult breaking the ice. Yes, absolutely. Elise says, I do not really have a problem communicating, but I do struggle to get buy-in from investigators, officers who act as if they do not need our help and it hinders my desire to communicate and confidence in what I can do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think that that's true in the private sector. That's true in the public sector that, you know, they won't take me seriously. And how do I, how do I gain that influence? And, and at least that's what this is all about. Absolutely. Abigail says communication can be difficult, especially trying to express reasoning and the why. Yep, absolutely. Um, goal, let's see, sprinkles are for <laughs> what? Michelle, I'm not sure I understand your your comment here. <laughs> it might be a reference that I'm not quite getting. Uh, yes, Jen, uh, communication can be a tough challenge and we must practice communication. Renee says it can take time depending on the individual. She has learned that mo the more I understand someone and how they operate helps her know how to handle the situation and how to communicate with them. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Um, you know, Jen, uh, Aaron says powerful. You become a leader because you practice being a leader. Yes. You become a leader because you practice being a leader. <laughs> and you can't just start practicing because you got the title. You look at your people and you give them opportunities to practice, just like they're practicing driving a car, right? Tanya says, sometimes I feel like I spend half my time following up on emails and requests and repeating myself. We wanna talk about systems with you, Tanya. I have some really great tools for you, Tanya, that could be helpful in terms of systems um, and never repeating yourself again. Uh, yes, Keith says, uh, I'm not sure why I know what that means. Let's see. Jen, yes, leadership is absolutely intentional. Absolutely intentional. Okay, so 
Um, you know, and so we think about this relationship piece. And so one of the things that Renee just mentioned is it takes time, right? It takes time to communicate. And what she also said is this, this idea of um, a win-win approach, right? A win-win approach. Lisa says, I struggle with people that want to lecture instead of just provide a message. Yes, Lisha says to communicate well, you have to first to understand to be understood. Lisha, we read the same book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, one of my favorite books. I was just about to talk about that. You first have to understand before you are understood, right? So have you ever been around someone where you know they're not listening and they just wanna wait for like this little teeny gap in space where you're breathing for them to inject what they want to say? Or is that you? Are you the one doing that, right? And so when you communicate, if you are a leader, you must read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Also, Think and Grow Rich, I've already shared that one with you. You know, to really um, be intentional about how you take on these conversations. And so, um, yeah, you lose the audience, Keith. Exactly, you lose the audience. And so when you lecture when you vomit your thoughts on people right no one's going to listen to you you're going to be this manager that's that's not received very well yep culture code is a phenomenal book we actually use that book in our leadership program uh ria thank you for that and so here's the thing um i think it was um lisha that said you know really think what what can you hear first? How can you listen? This is what Renee was saying too. Coming from that place of listening first, understanding how people operate, what kind of person they are, what kind of list, what kind of um, you know listening can you do that's going to support their growth? Right? Uh, yes, <laughs> vomit thoughts exactly, exactly. Keith says, I talk to people not listening, um, just waiting for a chance to reply. Yeah. And it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good when, you know, when you're just spitting out stuff, right? And so listening to how you can hear this person and listen from their perspective is key. And so that's what we're talking about over the next three sessions today, tomorrow, and Monday, right? What we're talking about is how to effectively listen and communicate. And the way to do this is to be super ultra intentional. And we're gonna give you the how, we're gonna give you a tactic. So, so far, um, yes, use the color code in, in retreat training. Yes, exactly, the color code. So um, Renee, is your color code the same of mine where you're saying, is this person a yellow? Is this person like a yellow is a helper? A blue is like a goal kind of person. A red is like a fiery kind of person who likes competition. Um, a green is like a stats organizational person. You know, knowing who you're talking to is key, right? And you have to take a step back and realize that your role is not to make someone do something. Your role is to find ways to inspire people to step up into their own growth and leadership. Yes, Renee, so we're on the same page. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so Keith, you know, um, you said you have so much good stuff, they need to listen. I, I encourage you to turn it around on yourself. You be the listener. You be the listener, right? Leaders pause, they get quiet, they listen and they think, okay? They listen and they think. Thank you, Lisa, thank you. Um, interesting approach, yeah, quiet and think. Because think about your home environment. If you're just barking at someone the way you receive information, it may not be the same way that they receive information, right? So if you're if you're looking at a person who's challenged with confidence and you're telling them why are you doing things this way, you know, they they're going to break down. They're going to break down and they're not going to respond to you. What Renee's talking about, what Leisha's talking about, what I'm talking about, what the books on leadership talk about is really thinking um you know, really thinking about what kind of person are they and how can I be a really good listener? And how can I see their perspective so that I can also share mine, right? Yes, Annie, amen to listening. Yes, Shani, <laughs> and a drink. Yeah, exactly. So we're gonna start this process. This is a three-part process. So you wanna take some notes today. We're gonna be super simple. You wanna take some notes tomorrow. You wanna mull on it, right? And then Monday when you show up, you're gonna be ready to rock and roll, okay? So today is the relationship maps mapping basics so we're on session four right now in your little guide um leaders gain influence trust and buy-in through focusing on people <laughs> and building relationships 
by focusing on people and building relationships. And quite honestly, this was a concept to me that when I was an analyst back in the day, um, I didn't think about. I did not think about the people. In fact, I thought people were wasted a waste of time. I was like, no, I got so much work to do. I have so much work to do. I don't have time to socialize. It is more than socializing. It is creating culture. It is creating feedback loops. It is creating this environment of success. Lisa says, I feel like I have to open up to the team and hear their ideas. Yeah, of course you do. Um, Caroline says, listening and being a leader go hand in hand. Um, you know, exactly. And so for me, I have a, an amazing team of people. And if I didn't ask them, what do you think every day, then every time we meet, then I wouldn't have I wouldn't have um, designed the things that we've designed as a team the way that we did. Because my brain doesn't have all the answers, right? But listening to Caroline, listening to Michelle, listening to the people that we coach, at the end of every coaching um, section, once they finish their cycle, I always ask, you know, what did you enjoy? What can we let go of? You know, how did we do and how can we make improvements? And we have made some of our best improvements to our coaching programs based on that feedback, based on that feedback. You don't know it all, I don't know it all, and we need that feedback. And in order to get that feedback, we need to build relationships and focus on people. All right, let's see some comments here. I see them flowing in. Um, Jen says, yes, Lisa, get that buy-in uh, by opening up to them and hearing their ideas, absolutely. Michelle says, you must master a new way to think before you can master a new way to be, yes. Thinking is key, absolutely. Thinking yourself into results. Rhea says, curious if you listen when your coworkers are trying to tell you um, why they're right. Um, sometimes, sometimes, you know, uh, you really have to, you know, spend the time thinking uh, about what they're trying to say. They may not be the best communicators, right? Uh, but thinking about what your people are saying is, is really what's key. Melissa says, people who don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yes, Melissa, we're like soulmates. You get me, right? You have to care first. Care first. If they think you don't care, they won't care to hear anything you say. Exactly. Welcome, Lily. Glad that you are here. Melissa, um, uh, um, Jen says Melissa is so right, and she is. Better late than never. We're, it's okay. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. All right. So let's see. We got a bunch of comments there. Okay. So phase one of this relationship building strategy, who's ready? Who's here live? Who's ready to hear this relationship building strategy, an actual process right here, right now, step one of three that you're going to hear right here, right now. And if you are listening to the replay, let us know too. Give us some love, hearts, whatever it is on Facebook that happens. It, do y'all have a button that you can press some hearts so that I can see your faces? If you have a button that you can press hearts or check marks or whatever it is so I can see your faces, I would love, I know we're not here in person, but I, I wanna feel like I'm connected to you. So go ahead and press some hearts there so I can actually see your faces. Lisa's ready, Darcy's ready, Sarah's ready, Tanya, Ria, all these folks, Alicia's ready, relationships are key, Jen is ready, awesome, awesome. Aaron's ready, good, good, all right. So here we go, we're gonna build it right in. Tanya, oh, there we go, we got some, we got some hearts. Um, Abigail is very excited to get this strategy down. Allie's ready, um, great, great. Allie's double ready, she got two hearts, I love it. <laughs> exactly. Um, let's see, Shani says, best kind of ships are relationships. Yeah, and a lot of analysts who are very green in their mentality, a lot of frontline workers who are very, you know, get the job done and go home, don't realize this. They just want to get the job and, and go home and, and they'll stay in that job. Leaders recognize the need of connection. Okay. Ready, Betty says Keith. I like it. So the first thing you want to think about is being intentional, being authentic and consistent. Okay. So visiting it often, being intentional, being um, consistent and visiting this often. This is a relationship is not something you you start and then you just forget about the person for a year, right? Uh, you're gonna have those relationships where you've built it up and you can do that and go back and it's just like you never left them. But in the beginning, that's not how it works. In the beginning, it's very very intentional, and so you want to be intentional. You want to be authentic. You cannot build fake relationships. They don't work, and quite honestly, they don't satisfy the soul. Right, so being intentional about the relationships that you build, getting to know the people that you're building these relationships with is key and doing this consistently, 
right? Making time for this process consistently is key. So the first, the number one um, thing, once that mindset is there, the number one thing is to define the who. Pick five people right now, pick five people right now who you wanna connect with. You know, if you have a staff of eight or 10 or 30, I mean, if you have a staff of 80, you're not gonna connect with all of them right away, right? You might have your list and, and, and identify five people for right now. So when you have those five people written down on your piece of paper, go ahead and plug in the number five so that I know that you're still with me. Five people that you wanna build a relationship with. If you're, let's say you're a chief here right now and you wanna build a relationship with your analyst, right? Put, you know, uh, maybe that's one, maybe with a patrolman, that's another. If you are a business owner and you want to build a relationship with, you know, a couple of clients that you've been serving or maybe a potential partner, right? Um, if you are a supervisor and you want to build a relationship with five other supervisors, right? Or some other folks, go ahead and plug in. Once you have those written down, go ahead and plug it in. So Alex, Renee, Sarah, Jen, uh, you folks are ready. Fantastic. Intentional, authentic, and consistent, um, Abigail, exactly. Rhea, not sure of the five. I can be one of your five, Rhea, if you want. I can be one of your five. Elizabeth is good, Tanya's good. Okay, good. All right, good. Uh, Lisa's got her five, Shani's got her five. You wanna start with five. You cannot start with like 55, it's just too much. Caroline has her five, great, fantastic. So the next thing to do is to identify maybe five things that you want to know about this person that you don't know right now. So maybe like Renee says, you wanna know their personality style. What kind of person are they, right? What kind of personality are they? Are they a helper? Are they a black and white kind of person that the lines all have to be straight? Are they artsy? Are they receptive? Like, <laughs> thank you, Ria. Uh, Lisa's ready, fantastic. I see all your fives coming in. I love it, great. So think about their personality style. Think about their communication needs, right? What, what, what fills their bucket? What fills their bucket? Are they the kind of person, you know, that would appreciate a public announcement? Um, are they the kind of person that would appreciate a lunch, a private lunch? Are they really like this, like louder person that are or extroverted or are they more introverted, right? Who are you? What are they like? Um, what are their hot buttons? What are their hot buttons? So if you are if you are thinking about how to line this up, you can have your five people listed right here and across the top, you can have, you know, hot buttons, family, um, you know, do they have any pets? Are they a healthier person, you know, or, you know, uh, do they like wine? Like, you know, just different things that you wanna know about this person. What's their personality like? What kind of learner are they? Uh, that hot button, what are they confident about, what are they not confident about, right? Um, those key things. What are their biggest blockers? What are their biggest blockers, right? Um, so you can set up a little Excel sheet with five names and then just a bunch of things that you wanna know about this person that you think is gonna help with your relationship. And that's it, just set it up. Just set it up and identify what you already know, right? Maybe in your little Excel sheet or on your little written piece of paper or whatever. You have the five names, you have a bunch of categories that we talked about here. Go ahead and plug in some categories that maybe I didn't say or maybe you plan on recording. And think, okay, if I'm talking about Rhea or if I'm talking about Annie, what do I know about Annie? Okay, what do I know, you know, what do I know about her personality style? Uh, what do I know about her family? What do I know about, you know, these other, her hot buttons? What gets her going, right? What do I know that she's really great at? What are her dreams? What does she want to do in her, in her life, right? So thinking about those, those key pieces and that's it. And what are their birthdays? Yeah, that's a good one. What's their birthday? So that's your homework for tonight is to really fill that piece in, right? To fill that piece in. So Alicia says birthday. Uh, yeah, how do you know about Annie? Annie, I'll, I'll tell the Annie story later. It's she's phenomenal. So you know um, that's that's the homework for for today, right? So you're gonna plug in your homework into um, um, unit one when you we come out with our recaps for day four. But I wanted to just kind of shift for a moment because many of you have been. I've, I've made reference to a couple of our. Um, you know, ways that we help build other leaders. And so I just wanted to share with you, you know, uh, we've been giving you a lot of really great tools, right? Um, no, no, not right now, Lisa. You don't have to fill it all in. Right now, you're just gonna set it up. That, that's the goal. If you know it already, fill it in. But, it, but I'm not asking you to go get this information quite yet because we're gonna talk about that tomorrow on how to strategize. So today is really about setting up 
in developing the plan, okay? So we've given you a ton of great tools. We've given you mindset. We've given you key things that leaders think about. We've given you, you know, the permission to have fear and recognize as a choice. We've given you action steps that you can take. And I trust that you're getting a ton of value. Who's getting a ton of value in this peak productivity master? That's not what this is. And this Leadership Foundations Masterclass. Who's getting a ton of value? If you're getting a ton of value, pick your most favorite emoji and put it in the comments. And if you don't know how to do emojis, do like the colon and, and, and then the parentheses and that'll give us a smiley face, right? So if you feel like you are getting value, this is day four. If you feel like you are getting value, go ahead and let me know in the comments right now. Allie, Alex, huge value. Yeah, yeah. So we put this together to really kind of skim the top of the surface and really give you the best value. We all have an Annie story, that's right. <laughs> many leaders, you know, struggle, as you know, and as you've heard, many leader, leaders, leaders, oh, look at all this value, I love it, thank you, thank you. Yes, I love the snowflakes, I love all of it, I love all of it, keep it coming, keep it coming. And so you've gotten value and it's only on day four, and I know that you're gonna get value Tomorrow on day five, we have a we have we have our twelve o'clock session Eastern, and then we have a special treat for you at one thirty. We have some leaders coming on to talk to you. So if you if you're around, go ahead and join us for that. And we have something very special for you on Sunday as well. If you are enrolled in this masterclass, you will get an email with a surprise. Um, so you can join us Saturday and Sunday if you like. Right, um, your favorite emoji. I like it. I like it. Fantastic. And so we know that you've been getting value and it's only day four. We have half of our program left to go. We have three more days left to go, right? Um, and so, um, you know, we also recognize that leadership is long-term, right? And so several of you have are, are in our leadership programming. Several, several of you have heard about our leadership programs. And, and I wanted to just take 30 seconds and share with you what they actually are. So we know that leaders need a place to go to practice, to share ideas, to be with other leaders, to grow their own leadership, to take ownership of their own leadership. And so we have um, a coaching program. It's group coaching and one-on-one -on -one coaching for leaders who really want to up it a level, right? Or maybe you are the supervisor, right? And you want to up it a level for you and you also want to start rising your team. And so... Uh, a lot of folks are moving their teams through our leadership pro program because it's like no other. It is like no other. We, we, a lot of leadership programs are like a week long or four hours long or something like that, right? But our leadership program is 12 months of support. 12 months of support. It's completely interactive. It's sessions on Zoom where we meet virtually and we talk about the topic of the month. And here's some of the topics. The leadership cascade, cultivating belonging, high purpose environments, creating cooperation, um, promoting growth and sustainability, activating innovation, like motivating your people, coaching mentality, thinking like a leader, leader's intuition, building legacy. So we get together every single week, right? At, at your leisure, of course. And we have a platform where leaders meet to talk about building infrastructure, to talk, talk about rising their people. And they actually get tactics to do that. They get the tactics to do that. And so uh, we've had so much success in our leadership programs uh, that, that we uh, have, have simply so many great stories to share with you. And we actually have some shares, stories to share with you over the next couple of days, right? And so what this does is it really provides a platform for leaders to grow over the course of a year because you don't learn what you need to learn in a week or in four hours, right? You might learn the strategies, but you don't learn the implementation and the application of them. Sometimes you need support along the way, right? Sometimes you need support along the way. Most times you need support along the way. So we do role playing, we do leadership concepts, we give you tools to use with your team, toolkits and all kinds of yummy stuff, as well as make sure that you're taking really good care of yourself. And so that's our RG Leadership Incubator Program. We'll send you an email with a little bit more information, but I know several of you have reached out to me already and asked me, what happens after this training series? <laughs> you know, where do we go? We have a bunch of solutions for you uh, at our fingertips that are already operationalized, that are already successful, that you can be a part of. We have um, 
Uh, one of our cohorts are going through, we have a group of nine people right now who are, who are connecting every Tuesday afternoon to, you know, to coach each other, to learn how to mentor each other, to get into those habits, to learn how to listen and to exchange ideas on cultivating these, these cultures of, of success and performance, um, you know, performance improvements for their teams, right? Thank you, Ria. Yes, thank you. Exactly. And so, so many wonderful things that, um, you know, for those of who are looking to be in close proximity with others, with a, a team of people who've been there, done this a bazillion times and can give you the tools that you need to succeed, the platform that you need to succeed. So, um, so you'll get some more information about that. So I wanted to let you know, just because a couple of people have been reaching out um, and we really are looking for our February session starts in February. We're looking for February folks who are ready to jump on board. Um, so if, if that's you, if you're just like, I just want to skip all the, the emails and everything. And I just want to hop on the phone with you, Dawn, or you, Caroline, and, and learn a little bit more about the program. Just message me, message Caroline Collins, we'll hop on the phone and we'll let, we'll try to figure out if it's a, if it's a good fit for you. Shani is ready. Fantastic. Shani, let's hop on the phone and let's just make it happen. Um, yeah, absolutely. We'll send you a message right away. We'll send you a message right away. So this is the support that, that is making people just absolutely leap into success, leap into success. And, and they're going to share some stories with you tomorrow. So tomorrow at noontime, we are going to talk about once you have your lists, Let's design goals and strategies around this list. So we're talking about building relationships and how relationships are so flipping key, right? Are so key. Um, so that's at noontime Eastern tomorrow. And then uh, many of you are like, Saturday, Saturday, wait, we're meeting on Saturday. The answer is yes, leaders take control of their own growth. And that's why we're back here on Saturday. And if you are like, oh my gosh, I have something with the kids and I just can't do it, we hope that you join us live. But if you can't, listen to the replay. Everything will be in unit one. But we hope you join us live because we are announcing another winner tomorrow for those who are live with us. And then at 1.30 p.m. Eastern, we have three people who are popping on board talking about how they built their leadership and giving you tactical tips on how to build yours, on how to build yours. I can't wait for the speakers. They are flipping phenomenal. I'm so excited about them. You'll get an email after this session that tells a little bit more about that, right? That tells you a little bit more about that. And then Sunday, Sunday is your day of rest. It is absolutely your day of rest, but we do have a sergeant who will be joining us who's going to talk about his leadership growth and how he built an analytical unit from the ground up, right? As a sergeant, also in charge of SWAT, also in charge of 50,000 other things, and how he is building his unit from the ground up. And his focus is relationship strategies, creating buy-in, and building the vision. So that's on Sa Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. You'll also get an email about that. So check your emails, okay? All the information is in there. So for today, I'm going to go ahead, right after this, I'm going to post your homework in unit one. Um, if you've fallen a little bit behind, it's okay. It's okay. Your growth is at your pace. Your growth is at your pace. And if right now you're just starting out, it's okay. Listen to these recordings. They are going to disappear Wednesday night. So you want to make sure that you're listening to these um, uh, over the weekend. All right. So this has been awesome, amazing, fantastic. You guys are plugging away. Um, I'm looking at all of the work that you are doing. And please know, I don't know if you can't really see that, can you? Um, please know that I truly am appreciative of, of the vulnerability, the ideas, the energy that this group is, is having during this masterclass. This is a seven days leadership growth masterclass that's just touching the surface. But you're here, you're growing, you're developing, and I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. So my commitment to you is that I'm going to go in and look at every single comment, look at every single homework and make sure that I'm providing some feedback for you. And your commitment is to show up and your commitment is to show up. No, Keith, we're not going to save the recordings. They're all going to be gone on Wednesday. So unit one will be gone by Wednesday. So make sure that you're digging in um, for sure. Yes, exactly. Sharing your weakness without fear. Sharing your weakness, Shani, without fear. Exactly. Um, we are absolutely, Jen, looking forward. Bria, we're looking forward to seeing everyone's growth. Lisa, me too. Yes, yes. Let's, it, Lisa, if you're saying me too to hopping on that call, let's make that happen. All right. 
So for the rest of you, we'll see you tomorrow. We're going to continue this relationship building strategy piece tomorrow. So join us here. Uh, we'll announce our winner. And again, go back and do that homework. I can't wait to see what you are doing. Hasta mañana, Victor. Hasta mañana. We'll see you soon. Bye now.